Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the first screencast of the Scaling Rails series sponsored by New Relic. You may have noticed in the blog where you downloaded this that there's no comments on each screencast. There's a reason for this. I'm actually allowing people to submit URLs, right? So if you watch the episode and you know of a good resource, for example, one that has to do with page responsiveness, you can post it to that blog link. What we'll end up with is a great database of resources for that subject. So let's get going. First of all, we need to be clear what we mean when we say responsiveness. What I'm talking about is the amount of time it takes to load a web page in a browser. And there's two topics we're going to be covering in this screencast. First of all, how do you measure responsiveness? And second of all, how do you improve responsiveness? So let's get going on that first topic. There are two different tools I'm going to show you to measure page responsiveness. And the first is Firebug from within Firefox. So Firebug is a plugin. You just click here to install the plugin. You'll have to restart Firefox. And then what you'll find is when you go to a website like uh, railsenvy.com, you're going to see that there's going to be a little green checkbox down there in the bottom right hand of the screen. Once you click that checkbox, it's going to pop up a little tab. And on this tab, you're going to see a net button. So if you click that and then you refresh the page, you're going to see something which looks like this. I know it's small. Don't worry, we're going to zoom in. So as you see here, um, it took 108 milliseconds to load that first part of the page, which was just probably the HTML. Then the CSS came in, and then the JavaScript. And as we go down the page here, we can see how long each component took to load for a combined total of 3.81 seconds to load the whole web page, which is kind of slow. But we'll show you how to optimize that in a bit. The second tool I'm going to show you how to use to measure page responsiveness is in Safari. So you go up to the Preference tab, you click on the Advanced button there, and then you check this box which says Show Develop Menu in the menu bar. Once you do that, you're going to see a new Develop Menu Bar item, and in there you see something called the Web Inspector. That's what we want, so go ahead and give that a click. So here's Safari's Web Inspector, and there's lots of information you can get from this tool, but we're just interested in what we can see under the Network button down there. So let's go ahead and press that. And now we get another one of these graphs, which shows us how long the different components of the page took to load. If we zoom in, we can see that we've got you know, our CSS and JavaScript again. And we also have these little exclamation points, which will give us tips on how we might be able to speed up the page. So as we scroll down here, we can see how long each different image and script took to load. And at the very bottom, it also gives us a breakdown on the total size of the page. So the size was 678 kilobytes. And we can see 56K of that was documents, some was style sheets, some was images, et cetera, et cetera. So now that you know how to measure page responsiveness, let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. It took 3.81 seconds to load railsmv.com, and 0 0.108 of those seconds was that first initial page request, which amounts to about 3% of the total request. Now, if we decided to do some server-side optimization, maybe we could take that 108 milliseconds and optimize it to 54 milliseconds, which means the page would take 3.76 seconds to load, and we'd get 1.4% faster. Woo, wow, I'm, I'm glad we spent those that week optimizing that and making it twice as fast. It really paid off. No, right, this is obviously, you know, doesn't work. Um, if we reverse this and instead looking at optimizing the 97% that it actually takes to load on the page after that first request, maybe we can figure out how to take that 3.8 seconds and optimize it to 1.9 seconds, which means the page is now going to load about 50% faster. So obviously, the best way to optimize this website is to simply improve the browser load time, which leads to our second big topic, how do you improve responsiveness, right? Of course, the first way is improving server performance, which we saw just a second ago isn't really worth it. And the second way is by improving browser load time, which is what we're going to look at right now for railsenvy.com, since that's what it needs. Our first step is to install YSlow, which is a Firefox add-on by Yahoo. YSlow helps you figure out where you can improve your front-end browser performance. So once we install the plugin and restart Firefox, we're going to see this little icon, as you see here. It'll appear in the bottom right-hand corner of Firefox. Then we go to a website like railsenvy.com, click on that link, and it's going to give us a report card, which looks something like this. And railsenvy.com got an F. 
<laughs> this is good and bad. This is bad because, you know, our website is slow for our users, but it's good in that there's a few small things we can do, which it tells us here, to dramatically increase the responsiveness of our website. We're going to go over the top three things you see on this list, starting with making few HTTP requests. Rails actually has some built-in tools for helping you with this, starting with the ability to cache JavaScript pages. So if I run this line in my code, it's basically going to include all the JavaScripts in my JavaScript directory. And then in production, when I run this code, it's going to combine all that JavaScript into a single file called all.js. We can also customize this by specifying the name of the cache if we want to. So in this instance, the cache file that would be created would be main.js. We can also specify a bunch of different specific JavaScripts, which we want to combine into a single file. The same thing goes for style sheets. If I have a line like this in my code, it's going to go to my style sheet directory, pick out all of my style sheets, and in production, combine them all into a single file called all.css. So if we were using this code in a Rails application that had four JavaScript libraries and four style sheet libraries, in production, when it goes to cache all these files together, really our client would only see one JavaScript library and one style sheet library, which means we just saved six requests total, which should speed up our website. There's two more resources worth mentioning in regards to making fewer HTTP requests, the first of which is the Asset Packager plugin for Rails. What this does is it combines your JavaScript and your style sheets together, just like those commands we saw a second ago, but it also minifies them. So it basically compresses those files down, um, takes out the line breaks, takes out all the spaces, pushes them all together so the files are smaller that it creates. The second thing worth mentioning is the Google Ajax libraries. Why is this beneficial? Well, if somebody comes to your website, maybe they load the application.js from your website and they load the prototype library from the Google website. Well, if that user visited a website previously that also loaded that same prototype library, when they get to your site, your site's going to seem even faster because they no longer have to load that library from your application. The second thing we can do to speed up our front-end responsiveness is to use a CDN, which stands for Content Delivery Network. People use CDNs to distribute static content all over the world. Static content meaning like images, style sheets, JavaScripts. So for example, here we've got our Rails server, and what we're going to do is we're going to distribute our images on a server in US, one in Japan, and one in Europe. Now if a user comes along who's from Japan, they're going to do a standard request to our normal Rails server, but when they go to get the images, they're going to go to the closest server, which in this case is Japan, get the images from there. Websites that properly use CDNs can see up to a 20% speed increase in load time. Of course, this is going to depend on how meaty your web page is, how big it is. A good example here is like video. Video is a great candidate for being loaded across many different CDNs in many countries so that your clients can load it up very quickly. A few big CDNs you may have heard of include Akamai, CDN Networks, and Limelight. However, if you're just starting out with this stuff, I recommend just taking a look at Amazon's CloudFront service. Basically all this is is Amazon S3 storage with a layer on top of it that will distribute your content all over the world. And it just costs a little bit more money than Amazon S3. So that's a good way to start out. And then maybe when you have enough content, move up to one of the big boys. Rails actually comes with a little bit of code to help us serve our static assets from our content delivery network, and it looks something like this. We basically declare an asset host on our configuration. Then when we use an image tag, what it's going to do is it's going to prepend that URL onto that image path so we can serve up our images from our content delivery network. The third thing we can do to increase performance is add an expires header, which is just basically a date which says this particular asset is valid until a certain time. Here's an example of how it might be used. We've got a client and a server. The client requests a certain image from the server. The server then returns that image along with the expires header. The client then stores that in its local cache. And then next time it requests the same image, well, it checks its local cache. Has, the, has it expired yet? Is it still fresh? If it's still fresh, well then it's going to pull it from the local cache and not even touch the server. 
Adding this expires header is usually something you do on your front end web server. Here's how you might do it with Nginx. And here's how you might do it for Apache. So as you can see here, we're checking to see if the incoming request is an image, if it's a style sheet, or if it's a JavaScript. If it is, with Nginx, we're setting the expires header to the maximum value. And in Apache, we're setting it to a year from now. If you've done this before, you probably realize there's a small problem with doing this. And that is, if we have a client, the client gets the image, stores it in its local cache, but then maybe we update the image, maybe we do a new deployment and the image changes, well then the client, when it goes to load that page again, might load that old image. How does it know to get that new image if the date we have on the expires header is somewhere deep into the future? Rails by default has a way of getting around this issue if you're using any of these helper methods. See, with these helper methods, what Rails does is it goes and it looks for these files in the file system and calls mtime on each of them. It basically checks to see when the last time they were modified and then takes that date stamp and appends that to the end of the URL. So what happens when we update the image here? Well, that's going to change the date stamp and then next time somebody goes to that website, loads that up, it's not going to load what it has in a local cache because the URL is different. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go over the rest of these ways to improve our front-end performance, but some of them are pretty self-explanatory, and Weisslow has some great documentation on their website. So as we said earlier, to improve responsiveness, we need to improve server performance and improve browser load time. The second of which we've already gone over, you guys know how to do that. So once you get that out of the way, it's time to take a look at server performance, which all the rest of these screencasts are dedicated to. Thank you for watching this screencast. And don't forget, just like YSlow is great for learning where you need to improve your browser load time, New Relic's RPM service is great for figuring out how to improve server performance. So if you haven't installed it yet, I highly recommend you check it out. And it's totally free, so why not take advantage of it?